What is going on YouTube? Welcome to my channel. Welcome back to my channel. It's the Pizza Guy John. I'm going to be showing you how to make the perfect pizza and it's not going to be done in just one video. It's going to be a three part video series on mastering the perfect pizza. You can't have a perfect pizza without mastering the dough. So this first video is going to be showcasing how to make pizza dough. Um, that way you could have a perfect pizza. I think it's really important to have the perfect pizza. You have to start off at the basics and the basics is starting off with the perfect dough. If you don't have good dough, then you don't really have a perfect pizza. So I'm going to be showing you how to make the perfect pizza dough. Then we're going to go into the next video, which is going to be the toppings, the sauce. And then the final video will be showing you how to make the perfect pizza using either your home oven, outdoor oven. Um, but before we get to all those steps, let's learn how to make the perfect pizza dough. All right, in order to learn how to make the dough, so that way again, you're mastering the dough so that you're able to make the perfect pizza, I'm gonna be basically showing you the baker's percentage. Once you've learned the baker's percentage, then you're able to make four pizzas, 10 pizzas, 100 pizzas with this with the simple formula and it is really really simple once you've learned it then of course you can make you know again tailor that to what your needs are in today's video i'm basically just going to show you how to make four pizzas which you can see here and again i'll plug all this information down in the description below or you'll see something here on the screen as well uh, but we're wanting to make four pizzas at 260 grams we're doing about 65% hydration, which again, the hydration is how much water um, is relevant to the amount of flour. And 65 is a, a good starting point. Uh, once you learned how to do 65%, then you could go up a little bit higher. Um, but for the purpose of this video, and because you're learning how to make uh, the perfect dough for your pizza, we're gonna start lower. It's easier to handle. Um, and I, overall, I think it you know just works out perfectly. Uh, we're going to be doing what we call a 24 hour cold fermentation so what that means is we're doing about 16 hours of bulk cold fermentation in the refrigerator and eight hours at room temperature um, so again it's a 24 hour dough recipe the baker's percentage is pretty simple you always know that 100 percent is the flour and from there then you formulate that to to the flour um, so because again, I'm stating that I want to do 65% hydration, then we need 65% water, which again, that is calculated to that. We need 2% salt and 0.3% yeast. Once you know that formula, then like I said, it, you can basically formulate that to anything. If you wanted to go 75% hydration, then you plug in 75% water here. The salt and the yeast, again, keep that the same. Once you have your formula of what percentage you want, then again, you go ahead and add all that. Once you've added all that, then you get one 167.3, which is the baker's unit. So that is, again, the total amount of all the percentages here. We're wanting to do, again, four pizzas. And since I said I want to do 260 grams, again, that will give us a good 12-inch pizza. Again, if you're doing bigger pizzas, then, of course, you would do you know, a bigger amount of grams. But again, I wanna keep it 260 because now at this point, I need to understand how much total ingredients or how much dough, my dough weight will need to weigh at the end. So again, I'm saying four pizzas at 260 grams. We times that, that will give us 1,040 grams of our dough weight. So that's what I'm shooting for. I know that again, I need to shoot to that so that I'm able to get four pizzas at 260 grams once you have your dough weight and your baker's unit then now we need to understand the unit value this is going to give us what value per the amount of total ingredients or the percentages of ingredients that we need so in order to get that unit value what we do at this point is a higher number here which is 1040 is the dough weight divided by our baker's unit, again, which is the total uh, percentage amount here. We divide that and that will give us 6.21 unit value. So once you have your unit value, then now again, we just go into all of our percentages here and we're going to times that. And that's gonna give us the grams that we need for each of our item that we need. So that way we could go ahead and start making our dough. 
So once we have that, 6.21 times 100% flour, that's going to give us 621 grams of flour. So now I know I need 621 grams of flour. 6.21 times 65% water is going to give us 403.65 grams of water. 6.21 times 2% salt is the salt that we need. Then I know I need 12.42 grams of salt. And 6.21 times 0.3 yeast is telling me that I need 1.86 grams of yeast. Once we have all that, then we could go ahead and let's start making our dough. All right, so before we get into actually making our dough, I just want to briefly go over a couple different types of flours that you'll be able to find in your local, local grocery store. Uh, the most common flour that you'll be able to find, uh, you'll be able to find what we call an all-purpose flour. Um, you also have a bread flour, and in some store, local stores, you may be able to find the Signature Select Double Zero Pizza Flour. I do have a video on this flour that I've uh, compared this with another Double Zero Flour. I'll go ahead and link that above. You could go ahead and check that out. Um, these are going to be your different types of flour. If you want to make the perfect pizza, highly recommend checking out a Double Zero Pizza Flour. Um, you could check a look at see if any local markets have any some sort of local. Uh, flour that's you know maybe uh, a finer flour um, you can go through Amazon I'll go ahead and link some of the flowers that I use on Amazon as well if you want to go ahead and take a look at that uh, but again you if you want to make the perfect pizza you definitely want to get the uh, a good flour that way you could you know be able to taste the difference in that crust of course if you go with the all-purpose or bread, bread flour um, you may be lacking some sort of flavor there as well um, but again, that's totally fine. If that's all you're able to find in your area, then go ahead and just go with that. But again, highly recommend checking out uh, some sort of a double zero pizza flour um, or again, some uh, finely uh, milled flour uh, that's going to give some sort of a uh, light and crispier pizza. And in today's video, I'm going to be using a double zero caputo pizzeria flour. Mm -hmm. Next item you want is your is your yeast, and again, I'm gonna just briefly talk again about uh, different types of, of of yeast. This is a instant dry yeast. Again, super common to be able to find that in the store. You can find the little baggies of it, the little packages of it. Um, but this again is an instant dry yeast. Um, you're able just to put it in your flour, no sort of proofing it. It's just ready to go. Um, there's also an active dry yeast, which again, active means that you have to activate it before you're able to use it. So you'd use your yeast, small percentage of the water, let that proof up nicely. Then you go ahead and add it into your flour or to your dry, dry ingredients. Um, or you could use a fresh yeast, sourdough starter, um, any type of yeast like that. Um, but again, an instant dry yeast, I think is probably honestly the best way to go. Super easy, ready to go, and it's easy to mix into your uh, dried ingredients. All right, now let's talk briefly about salt. Salt, you could use a sea salt, a fine salt, any type of salt that again is available to you. Again, that is definitely fine. All right, now that we've discussed everything to do with flour, salts, uh, yeast, let's go ahead now, let's get a measurement of each ingredient. I highly recommend using a scale to be more consistent. Um, versus using uh, cups and teaspoons, you're not going to be as consistent and you're going to notice a different each and every time if you're going to be using that. So I highly recommend investing in some sort of scale. Uh, this is a pretty big scale that can weigh up to 22 pounds. I could do different measurements as well, ounces and grams. And also, again, highly recommend a small scale uh, such as this one. Um, that way, again, for your yeast, preferably, you're able to get that point and then you know the numbers after that so purchase a scale you will notice the difference in your making your dough and again this is all about making the perfect pizza so again purchase some, some good equipment that you're able to use all right so we're going to go ahead and measure out our flour first again we're looking at 621 grams of flour so i have my scale here i went ahead and got that uh, to zero and we're going to go ahead now and we're gonna get all of our measurements of flour in here. 352. 600. 
Again, this is a double zero pizzeria caputo flour. All right, and once you have your flour, go ahead and put that to the side and let's go ahead now and let's get our other dry ingredients, which is gonna be our salt. All right, so again, with the salt, we're looking at 12.42. So let's go ahead and get this measured out. 11. And see the best part about the scale again, uh, you can read it uh, and it says point. Uh, so again, we want to be as accurate as possible. 12.42, all right. Now that we got the salt, we'll go ahead now and we'll get our yeast. So let's go ahead and put that back on there. Get that to zero. And with the yeast, we're looking at 1.86 grams of yeast. So I'm just gonna go ahead and just get a spoon of that. And again, with the yeast, you wanna be as accurate as possible. So again, 1.86. And there we go, 1.86 grams of yeast. We'll go ahead and put that to the side. All right, so now we're gonna go ahead and measure out our water. Again, I have my water here. I have the small container, again, I placed on here. It's at zero. The water that I've gotten out of my refrigerator has a filter and it's roughly around 40 degrees or so. Um, so again, that is gonna be perfect. Again, if you're working in a hotter environment, um, then again, you wanna go with a lot colder water. If, you want, if you're working somewhere where it's a lot colder environment, then of course you wanna get a little bit hotter water. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and measure our water. We're needing 403.65 grams. So I'll show you how I do that part, but let's go ahead and let's get 403 grams of water. All right, so too much there. We're gonna go ahead and just take some of this out. Actually, a lot of it out. And so again, at this point, because I do need 0.65 grams, I'm not gonna really be too crazy about that, but I wanna make sure that I get right at 403. Then I just put a little couple of drops that way. You know, again, I, I know that that's, you know, probably somewhere around that 0.65. If it's a little bit more 404, then that's fine. Um, but again, we wanna make sure to, to shoot for about that 403 mark. So uh, let's go ahead and let's get that in. So we're roughly 403. Just do a little couple of drops of water there. And we're now at 403. Let's go ahead and put that aside and let's get to kneading. All right, so now that we have all of our ingredients weighed out, there's a couple of options that you could do at this point. You could knead in a mixer or because again, you're learning and you want to perfect and make the perfect dough, you're mastering the dough, I highly recommend getting your hands dirty. So at this point, roll up your sleeves because it's about to get dirty and we're gonna learn how to fill and properly uh, know when your dough is ready. So first thing that I like to do is I have a large bowl here and this is a uh, whisk or like a dough whisk. You don't necessarily need this specifically. If you have a whisk or a fork, of course, you could also use that. Uh, but what we do at this point, we get all of our flour pour it into our bowl here, and then you wanna go ahead and get your yeast. Pour your yeast in there. And then with your whisk, fork, or again, this dough whisk, just kind of mix it around. You're getting that yeast all into the flour. And if you made it this far, like, comment, and subscribe. It definitely helps out me and the channel a lot. Uh, comment down what's been your favorite part so far. So now that we've had that mix, then we're gonna go ahead. We're not gonna add all our water. We're basically gonna be adding maybe about half of our water just to get started. So uh, let's go ahead and do that. And so we're looking about half. And again, with your whisk, your fork, um, again, you could go ahead and just start mixing it around. And you're just getting all this uh, mixed in there. And again, if you had a mixer, then you could use your mixer. Again, uh, just the times vary from uh, how long you're mixing it. But again, I recommend just starting off using your hands first, you know, just to kind of fill the dough and learning the dough as well, because all doughs are different. All right, and now we're gonna go ahead and add, add a little bit more water. Again, we're about half, but we wanna go ahead and maybe add just a little bit of water, not too much, because again, you wanna be able to use leave at least 10% of the water uh, for the end. So 
uh, go ahead and just add a little bit more water. And at this point, you're gonna wanna get dirty. Again, don't be intimidated by it. Uh, but again, you're just mixing with one hand. And you're just getting all the dry, finding the wet spots. And again, this is a 65%, so it's not a super wet dough. If we were doing like a 70% or anything higher, then of course it will be a lot wetter. Um, but again, this is a little bit drier as well. All right. Now let's go ahead and add some more of the water. And now about 10%, we're gonna leave that there. And again, you're kneading, you're basically just pushing the dough down. You could do this on your counter, but again, highly recommend if you're able to use a bowl, um, you know, less of a mess as well. That you have to clean. And again, you're just mixing this around. All right, so you wanna be kneading this. And again, like I said, using the bowl, uh, again, helps keeps everything clean. Uh, but again, you're just kneading this until it's pretty much fully come together. All right, so now at this point, what you wanna do, you've kneaded it now for roughly three to four minutes. Again, it's not fully smooth, um, but again, there's not too many dry spots. So what you, at this point, uh, you could go ahead now and add all your salt. And you could add just a little bit of the water. Again, we're not adding all of the water. But again, you could go ahead, because what you want to do at this point is we're dissolving that salt. With your hand now, basically what you could do is kind of just squeeze and basically you're just adding, uh, getting the water into the dough. And you just want to do that. And again, this is the best part. Again, you're just using your hands. Uh, to fill the dough, be one with that dough. And you're just melting down, uh, dissolving that, that salt that you've just added. All right, and once you've done that, then of course now again, you're just gonna be going ahead and just kneading it, you're incorporating air as you're doing that into your dough. And it's just helping that gluten be strong. And you'll want to go ahead and do this until um, it's pretty much all dry. There's the dough isn't sticky, and then slowly we're gonna finish adding that water. So I'm going to need this for a couple minutes, and then I'll be back. All right. So the camera did not catch it, but again, what I wanted to basically state is that again the importance of adding the water in slowly and not all at one time. It just gives the dough, the flour you know, time to hydrate and get to the point that we need it. So I've now added all the rest of the water. And now we're gonna go ahead and just knead it, get to the point that it's really, really smooth. Again, may take three to four minutes, depending on how hard you're kneading. All right, so we've been kneading the dough now for about five to six minutes. As you can see, it's not sticky any, anymore. All the water now has been fully incorporated. At this point, what I'm gonna do is I like to do a couple of resting period. And again, this resting period basically just helps the gluten build stronger. So what we're gonna do now at this point is we're gonna get this covered with the towel and then we'll be back in about 15 minutes. The 15 minute timer just went off. Let's go ahead and take a look at this dough. Now at this point, we're gonna go ahead and knead it just for about a minute or two. And again, we're just building that gluten structure in this dough. All right, this dough now is looking really, really smooth. So at this point, uh, let's go ahead and take a look. This is the gluten structure. Again, it's ripping a little bit. So what we're gonna do, I like to do at least two of the 15 minute rest periods. We're gonna go ahead and get this covered, let it rest for 15 more minutes, and then we'll come back. All right, so the final 15 minute timer just went off. Now at this point, let's go ahead and take a look at this dough. I'm gonna go ahead and just pull a piece here. As you can see, um, the dough is a lot stronger now, it's rested. Um, and at this point, it is perfect. Again, the reason why we do these 15 minute rest periods, again, is just to let the dough relax. It builds the gluten stronger. And again, it just overall makes the dough uh, a lot better as well. So at this point, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and get this out of the way. And we're gonna get a bowl here. You could use a bowl, um, any sort of container. I did put some olive oil in there to kind of grease it up. That way it doesn't stick. And at this point, what we're doing is you're just pulling the dough and you're getting it to uh, another round ball. 
And at this point, you can flip it over and you're just kind of creasing it or pulling everything together, making it strong, flopping it into your bowl here, getting it covered. And this will go into the fridge for 16 hours. During that time, it is going to rise. Um, and then after the 16 hours, then we're gonna go ahead, pull it out of the fridge and we're gonna ball it up. So we'll be back in 16 hours. So it's 16 hours later and here is the dough. As you can see, it is doubled. Let's go ahead and take it out and weigh it before we actually get to weighing it and separating it. And again, we needed 10, 1,040 um, grams. So let's take a look and see what we have here. Got my scale. And we're looking at about 1,021, which is fine. We'll still get the amount of dough balls that we need. So at this point, we have our scale. We have our semolina to weigh out our dough. I'm gonna go and get that cleared out. I'm gonna put this to the side. And we're gonna get some semolina down here. And the dough is feeling really, really nice. So again, it is point that at that the fermentation point where it's gonna be ready to go here within the next eight hours. So before we get started, we have a dough box here. If you don't have a dough box, that's fine. Uh, you could use some sort of tray, you could use plates, you could use a uh, little plastic containers, anything will work. Uh, but if you have a dough box, again, this will definitely help save space as well. Uh, so again, we're doing four pizzas at 260 grams. So let's go ahead and let's get this separated here. And the dough will feel cold only because again it has been in the in the refrigerator but that's okay it'll still work perfectly so again we need 260 257 260 so i'm going to go ahead and show you how we're going to get this into a ball again we're just folding in the bottom to the folding in the bottom and you'll feel some air in there. Once that's there, then you can go and put it on your table and just do like this. Or you could go ahead and pick it up and just pinch from the bottom. You're wanting to seal the bottom nicely um, so that way it goes down into your box. And we'll put that like that. All right, it should be tight and then you'll go ahead and put it in your dough box. All right, so now that we have our dough balls all divided, again, these are 260 uh, grams. This one's about 240, 245. We're gonna go and let this sit at room temp for eight hours. In the meantime, go ahead and click on part two of the toppings and the sauce on how to make the perfect pizza. Again, part of this three-part video series. So we'll see you at that video.